Welcome to another Nonsense Wars review of a vintage LEGO Mindstorms expansion set. The 9731 Vision Command came out in 2000 alongside Exploration Mars, a year after the earlier Robo Sports and Extreme Creatures sets, and a year before the later Ultimate Builders set. The 141-piece kit cost $100, almost $170 in 2023 dollars, though it included what amounted to a fully functional Logitech webcam. We managed to buy this new open box copy for less than $100. It apparently once sold at a CompUSA store. The front of the fairly plain box shows the core camera piece and indicates that the set requires a PC and can work with the base robotics invention system. The back of the box gives more detail about the camera's capabilities, the programming software, and the RIS integration. The rather limited number of pieces come in two bags along with the camera, the software, and the Constructopedia. The set also contains some stranger bits, a folded sheet of colored squares, and two small pieces of double stick foam. The selection of beams, joiners, and gears is fairly tame, but it does include some parts in rarer colors, like spur and worm gears in red, and skew joiners in clear. As a bit of a tangent, we had a hard time finding a vision command, to the point that we initially wanted to review it without buying it. We found and installed a French version of the software and we tried to use it with the camera from the 1349 Steven Spielberg Movie Maker set. The seemingly identical part did not appear to work at all, and we took it apart to look for anything obviously wrong. Having not found a fixable problem after a thorough inspection, we had to keep looking and we eventually found an actual set. The software, both the French and English versions, installed without any issue on our Windows XP laptop. The CD actually loads a LEGO application and a Logitech driver and utility package. Do note that the installation itself does not actually require the RIS. It has a limited standalone section in addition to the more advanced expansion sections. Nonetheless, the UI still has the same visuals as the mainline Mindstorms programs. Let's take a look at the Logitech software as well. Here we can take pictures and record video directly from the camera and manage them in a gallery. It even purports to have some primitive editing tools, which we did not try. The whole application, including the not very good image quality, may seem pretty quaint today, but I don't think any of this functionality was readily accessible at the turn of the century. With that aside, we can go through the standalone training missions. The audio and video is very similar to that of the RIS 2.0. The introduction describes using the camera hardware and optimizing the surrounding lighting, which we clearly did not do. This part also shows how to navigate content using the control buttons in the lower right. 
finally, it instructs us to build the camera stand documented in the Constructopedia. The full model uses practically all of the parts in the set, and it allows the camera to tilt and swivel, though the latter seems a bit redundant, as we could simply rotate the entire thing. Nonetheless, the stand is important because, as shown here in Training Mission 1, Vision Command works by detecting motion in specific locations and triggering functions. If the entire view moves, arbitrary fields can get activated. Training Mission 2 shows how to attach different functions to different locations and how to save and load these programs. The drag and drop system works just like it did in RIS, and individual blocks may have their own detailed settings. The demo connects each of five fields to a different note, creating a virtual piano keyboard if set up properly. In practice, it might be a little too sensitive as keys often trigger multiple times when raising and lowering fingers. Training Mission 3 demonstrates how to filter inputs such as on a specific color. The relevant code block can train on a sample swatch and activate when it sees something similar. We trained a field on the included red paper and it triggered on a red iPhone. Of course, this probably does not work well under changing lighting conditions, but hardly do any of the other LEGO light sensors. Training Mission 4 did not work when we tried it, so let's go back to Exploration Mars. The Ranger and Surveyor sections require a camera and contain four and three tasks, respectively. The four involve taking and saving pictures, while the three involve controlling our existing Mars rover using the camera. In Ranger Task 1, we take a picture for an ID badge. We got an error when we tried to save the image, and we did not investigate further at this time. In Task 2, we delineate the camera's field of view, uh, effectively a trapezoid on the ground, and measure the distances between the corners. This actually has some tangential relevance to Task 4. In Task 3, we motorize the camera stand and rotate it using the Mission Control UI, where the controls lag just as badly as they did before. Note that the video feed ran pretty smoothly in Task 1 and 2, but slows to a crawl with the RCX connected. This strongly suggests that the lag is a software bug or hardware limitation rather than a feature. In Task 4, we take multiple side-by-side -side pictures and stitch them together to make a panorama. At this point, we managed to fix the earlier save issue by creating the directory specified in the error. With no additional image processing, the panorama does not play well with trapezoidal fields of view from the camera looking downward. It needs to look higher and or further away. And moving on to the surveyor tasks. 
first we attempt to drive our Mars rover back onto the lander by spotting it through the camera from afar. Here we have to deal with the lag of the inputs and with the coarseness of the controls. Even at the lowest power settings, each click rotates the rover maybe 30 degrees, and to turn less, we need to turn too far and turn back at higher power settings, such that the power difference between rotating left and rotating right goes down. For the second task, we put the camera on the rover and try to navigate through an obstacle course. This proved easier than the first task, while we still had to deal with the unrelenting lag, we did not need such fine-grained control. Despite the large size of our chosen obstacles, we put a piece of tubing on the front of the rover to help gauge depth as the field of view did not include any other parts of the rover. Finally, for the third task, we have to navigate obstacles and carry something back to the base. It probably wanted us to build a proper gripper for this, but we cheesed it by attaching a magnet to the end of our feeler. Nonetheless, we still had to do the power differential trick to pick up the sample, and these entire runs can take tens of minutes. In retrospect, I think we should have mounted the camera higher and looking lower to get a better view of the rover and its surroundings. I did not originally mean to make this a multi-part series, but I realized that we had a lot of content already, so stay tuned for part two, where we will look at the Vision Command challenges. On that note, this is the end of the video. Uh, please consider subscribing if you like what we do, and have a nice day.